No one likes to be cold, right? Well, I don't like to be cold, so let's chat about what to wear in Arctic conditions. Knowing what to wear in the freezing cold is properly, properly, it's an art form, honestly. Everyone has their favorite pieces of kit, um, but I wanna kinda show you the best way to approach uh, the layering system and everything you need um, after many, many years of trial and error in the cold wildernesses. Um, but before I start, please hit subscribe if you like this video, it will help me out a lot. The key to dressing well in the cold is having layers, basically layers. We've all heard of the layering system, but the layering system is the way to go. So let's strip it down and work up from there. Let's start with underwear. Okay, I haven't actually filmed myself in underwear. I filmed this, like it was freezing cold outside, but let's talk about underwear. I mean, boxers, guys, woolen, merino wool, go for some merino, merino wool boxers. Uh, ladies, same deal. Uh, woolen knickers, you can get merino wool knickers and you can also get merino wool bras as well. Um, and these can come down to here, so they actually form like a little bit of a vest, um, which will add extra warmth to your torso as well. Um, so we get like an extra layer uh, just overall like that. Next, next let's, um, the next layer, base layers. So leggings and a long sleeve, again woolen, merino wool if you can, um, long sleeve base layer. Uh, this material, I'll keep going on about it, but it really, really is great um, because if it gets damp from sweat, it will stay warm. Although, of course, we try everything, everything in our might to avoid sweating, but sometimes it happens. But this will just wick away the moisture um, and it works It works well if it's damp too. Um, I, oft, I go well with my top. I go with a halfway zip so that I can open it because sometimes, believe it or not, it does actually get pretty toasty when you're moving and I like a little bit of airflow or the option to have a little bit of airflow if I need it. If it's super, super, super cold, I also have another set of leggings to put over the woolen ones. Um, and these are actually really, really thick. They are fleece, fleeced ones. They're a great addition for the legs and the thighs, which I personally just get really, really cold. Um, so I like to have that back up too. Socks, again, woolen. I have a liner pair, um, a liner woolen pair and a thick pair for these sorts of trips. So two socks uh, and sometimes include a plastic bag as well, which I'll explain why a little bit at the end of the video too. A buff then goes on. Um, I've talked about buffs before. A buff is for keeping your neck warm. It's also pretty lovely to breathe through until too much moisture builds up. And then it just freezes on your face and creates a giant icicle. So you have to be careful when you wear it over your face, but that's why you have a face mask as well. Outer shell trousers, the shell trousers keep, you need something basically to keep the wind off. That also has some sort of rain protection too for knee or like moisture protection for kneeling down as well. Then you have a warmer top layer, either a fleece um, or an insulated jacket I have. So in between my outer shell. Next bit of kit I love is the synthetic down shorts to keep the tops of your legs and bum warm. You'll often find that you have high boots with warm gaiters. So your calves are kept really warm, but we forget about poor thighs and bum. You get them a few sizes bigger then you can get them on wherever you are to get them over everything um, and they just really they're a lifesaver for me when I discovered those things. The upper shell the jacket shell kind of depends where you are what kind of material you're going to go for. Uh, for this I have a breathable windproof uh, waterproof shell with a good hood don't forget about a good hood. Hoods work wonders in the wind but they also create this little microclimate around your face as well. For your hat, make sure it stays on, covers your ears. Sometimes you might even want two. I often have two hats, one thin, one, thin, one thick one. Um, and then of course, there's the mother of all jackets, the really fun bit of kit to buy, I think anyway, which is the big down jacket. Again, goes for a size bigger, so it's easy to get on, but these are perfect for trapping heat, keeping you warm on, on um, before you go to bed or on breaks, and even sometimes when you're moving if it's really cold as well. Then we've got the gloves. I don't know about you, I have so many gloves. I have a box full of gloves for every every scenario. I always have a liner glove. You take a bunch of liner gloves wherever you go. You try to keep that on all the time. Um, and then I, I go with a waterproof glove over that, and then I have big mittens to go over that. Um, but sometimes I won't, I'll skip out the middleman, the, uh, the waterproof glove, and just have the liner and the mitten. Um, and the mittens are mega warm. For a face mask, I go for a neoprene one, easy to get on. So just Velcro works well. Everything needs to be easy to get on because you're wearing gloves and you don't want to mess around in the cold. But by having, having these goggles and the face mask, you'll be amazed how cozy you'll feel. And you'll feel like you're in this own little world away from the elements. That's pretty much my essentials for keeping warm, layering wise anyway. Um, boots kind of vary what you're doing. 
in this little clip here, I'm wearing sorrel boots that I had on my first ever cold expedition. Uh, but since then, it's kind of been alpha boots, or if you're climbing um, in the Arctic conditions, then 8,000 meter boots. They tend to be like a couple of sizes bigger too, not just to accommodate the thick socks that you're wearing, um, or of course the doubling up of socks, but also because of the plastic bag I mentioned. So we, I put a plastic bag in between my thin layer of socks and my thick layer of socks, and this kind of acts, well it acts as a vapour barrier basically, it stops your shoes from getting wet. Uh, because that, if your shoes get wet, it'll take a long time to dry. Um, if your thinner socks just get wet from a bit of sweat, get damp, then you can simply sleep with them in your armpits. And that'll be much faster to dry out at night than if your boots got wet. Um, you don't want your boots to get wet. If boots get wet, then it often means, well, it kind of often means frostbite, which is big no-no. Big no-no. I want to avoid that at all costs. So it's also important that the shoe, like really important that the shoe isn't small anywhere on your foot. So you're able to trap air to keep um, everything warm because it's all about trapping air. And that's pretty much it. Really, really, really what I want to say is that staying warm is very doable. Um, we can control it. We can layer up, trap the heat and it will work. So I hope this has kind of been helpful for your future cold adventures whenever we're allowed to go whenever we're allowed to go out, out of this lockdown world. Um, I literally filmed this in the edge of a field in England when it snowed, but this system will help you in the proper cold environments as well, I promise. Please hit subscribe if you enjoyed, and I can't wait to see you next time. Goodbye.